uh, this is an invited talk, and it will be a 30-minute talk. Uh, Masaki Fujimoto, talking about JAXA's Martian Moons Exploration, MMX. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Masaki Fujimoto. I'm from ISIS JAXA. And uh, this is the mission that's uh, under planning at my institute. So there are so many missions to Mars, and you'd ask why. Maybe the answer is obvious to you. It's driven by its interest in uh, what its surface environment used to be. I mean, the habitability of the planet. So the key questions um, underlying, I mean, supporting this, these missions is uh, something like this. Uh, what is the history of the Mars surface environment? How did the atmosphere loss happen, and what was driving the climate change. So these are the driving forces behind the mission to Mars. But realizing that rocky planets, including Mars, must have gone dry, leads to a key questions of different type, but related. How was water delivered to Mars? And that really is a part of a big question. Well, how was the habitability of, of our solar system enabled? Let me try to elaborate on, on this um, concept. So this uh, view graph shows the structure of the solar system. You can clearly see that inner four planets are rocky planets. And then um, beyond the asteroid, you have uh, gas giants and icy planets. And this structure clearly tells you that there must have been a snow line upon the formation of the solar system, which means that uh, rocky planets these four rocky planets must have born dry when they were forming. And what you realize here is that Mars is sitting at the outer edge of rocky planets. Um, so there's an interest in, in the planet, the planet Mars itself, but there's another aspect, there's another uh, perspective to be interested in Mars, and that's, that is its location. Mars sitting at the outer edge of the rocky planets. Mars sitting in the gateway position between the inner part of the solar system and the outer part of the solar system. So, um, rocky planets must have gone dry, but we clearly know that at least Earth is a habitable planet and Mars could have been a habitable planet, which means that there must have been delivery of water across the snow line. There must have been transport of, of materials um, water and, and volatiles across the snow line. And that delivery water or volatiles or organic compounds must have come from outside the snow line to entitle the rocky planets to be habitable. And small bodies could have, is very likely to be the delivery capsule of volatiles and water. Then, uh, then you'd realize that dynamics of small bodies around the region of the Around, in the region around the snow line in the early uh, history of the solar system is the issue that needs to be understood if you want to understand how the habitability of the solar system was enabled. And as I said before, Mars is, is sitting at the outer, outer edge of the inner planet region. So Mars is, was at the gateway position to witness this transport process, enabling the habitability of the solar system. So uh, I think habitability of the solar system is a big question, and you, that you, you wonder which among the seven objects in the inner part of the system you should explore to address this key question. And our answer is, the, is go to Phobos and or Deimos. MMX is the is, is our MMX, our Martian Moons Explorer, is the um, is our mission and the and the planning. And the plain description, description of our mission is that it is a mission going to Mar Martian moons that will make close-up observation, um, close-up remote sensing, and then in these observations to find the, the best sampling spot. And then we make a we land for a while and then do the sampling and then return samples from Phobos. That will be the plain description of what we will, we will do with the mission. But if you have the aforementioned, aforementioned background in your mind, this um, mission will come to have a, you know, uh, different color. So the goal of this mission is, is to review the origin of the Martian moons, and then to make a progress in understanding of planetary system formation and of primordial material transport across the snow line, 
around the border between the inner and the outer part of the early solar system. And we think this uh, understanding this transport process is really critical in understanding what enabled the habitability of the solar system. So understanding the origin of the moons is the first step, but then once we have the sample in our hands, we, uh, we think we can make a big step beyond the knowing of the origin. So origin of Phobos and Deimos, we've heard of, of, of this story already before in this morning, but uh, it's not known. The two leading, two leading ideas is uh, either captured, oh, oops, either captured primordial asteroid or giant impact. If, once you have the sample, uh, we think, well, our, our experts think that uh, it's, it should be easy. Uh, I mean, if, if the truth is either of the two, once you have the sample in your hands, it should be easy to tell which is, which is true. And if the, if the sample analysis shows that the origin of Phobos is known to be captured primordial asteroid, then what we will learn from sample analysis is that sample analysis was characterized as a capsule that was on its way to deliver water and organic compounds to the inner part of the solar system. So this is a way, once we know that the Phobos is a captured primordial asteroid, we can learn about the transport process from this perspective. And synergy with HABSA2, uh, our mission to uh, primordial asteroid, and OSIRIS-REx, that's NASA, NASA's um, brother mission to primordial asteroid, is naturally expected. Because while the two asteroid missions are after the reservoir question, our mission, MMX, is after the transport question. If the origin of Phobos is known to be impact, and we hope that it's not too giant impact. Then uh, sample analysis will reveal that the samples are a mixture of mass, martial materials and impact materials. And, and what I mean by not too, what, what I mean by we expect the impact to be not too giant is that if the impact is not too giant, we can expect um, that this mixture we would we will obtain as samples back from Phobos, we will be we have. Uh, much, much, much chemical alt alteration due to the, to the impact. And if there wasn't that much alt alt chemical alteration, then the sample may tell us that um, we, we, we may find the samples to be a mixture of ancient mass that was yet super dry upon the impact, and then the impact uh, that was uh, primordial asteroid. And if, that, if, if this most exciting case happened to be true, this is another way of of witnessing the across the snow line and transport. So it's really super dry ancient Mars being hit by being hit by a primordial asteroid bringing the water and volatiles into the planet. That this will be the most exciting situation to happen. But we'll see. We don't we don't know yet, of course, and that's why we're having the mission. We'll see if this will be the case or not. And and this is another thing that's been discussed in the morning as well. Uh, but uh, once we have a sample back from the surface of Phobos, we have a chance of uh, obtaining uh, mild samples because um, Phobos could have, would, have, would have been showered by uh, debris from the moon's surface for the, uh, during its history. And then when we, once we have samples, we will, we, will, we will look into the details and try to pick up the Martian samples from it. And then once we have them, we will, try to, we will analyze them. And then the analysis will tell us, will enable us to read out the history of the Martian surface environment. Because impact must have been going on throughout the history of, of Mars. And then different samples from different epochs will tell us different uh, environment that Mars, Mars surface was in. There is, um, there is some planetary protection issue coming into play in, in this aspect, but um, we are aware of that, and we are really already talking to the relevant people on this issue. So uh, from the JAXA perspective, this mission is clearly a sample return mission, and we may know the origin of moons already from remote sensing results. We may, may be able to ha have a good hint of uh, origin of the moons already from remote sensing results. But the yet bigger step beyond knowing the origin itself will come when the samples uh, are in our hands. So this is the guiding principle in, in allocating resources in the mission designs. So 
you know, we are getting there, we are landing on the surface, so you might want to do so many things, but at the same time, the, the hard core of this mission is, is to return <laughs> samples safely from, from Phobos. So that's really the real, the, the real guideline in designing the, our mission. So the, here's the mission scenario, here's what the mission will, uh, will do. Um, of course, we, we're getting to, into the Mars, Mars, Mars orbit, and then we transfer to a, we try the satellite orbit around Phobos for close-up observations. We'll stay around Phobos, um, like at, at the altitude of 30 kilometers or, or even less, and they make close-up observations. And once we have the close-up, once we have done the close-up observation, we should be able to have a good idea of where the sampling should be performed. So we will land on the surface of Phobos and, and perform the sampling. And then after, after doing so, we will transfer, transfer to Deimos for multiple flybys, or maybe run, rendezvous from a quasi-satellite orbit. And uh, while we do so, we also want to make a bonus science by observing, the, uh, by making um, remote sensing of atmosphere, uh, Mars atmosphere and then some, um, and some other uh, space, space uh, plasma related themes. And then uh, we depart from Mars and, and recover samples and, and then do the initial analysis. So these are the, the plans we have. So um, how do we judge? How, how do we decide which, on which part of Phobos should we land and do the sampling? That, but, um, but before going to, um, but, but, but about the sampling, I, I, then I, I, let me talk about what, how we will do the sampling. Um, we have done Hayabusa mission, and we are now flying Hayabusa 2 missions. Those are the mission to do the sample, re sample return from an asteroid. Um, those asteroids have three orders of magnitude smaller gra gra gravity. But when it comes to Phobos, we, I don't, we don't think we can use the same technique as we do for Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2. So for Hayabusa, for, for Hayabusa missions, um, we do the touch and go sampling because of the very low gravity. But for this mission to Phobos, I th we think we have to uh, touch down on the surface for, we have to stay on the surface for some time, at, like one, one, at least one, one or two hours. So what we will do is to land on the surface and then uh, use the robotic arms to do, to do the coring, coring to obtain the samples. And because of this, because of this way of obtaining a sample, we think we can obtain at least 10 gram samples from the from Phobos and down to the depth of 10 centimeters. And uh, 10 gram is like a minimum, and uh, our, our you know target number is like 100 gram sample from from by doing this sophisticated way of of sampling. So that, that's the plan for landing, and uh, where, where are we in terms of the mission study? Uh, we have uh, formulated the mission requirements and mission scenario, and that leads to the definition of model payloads, which have been done already, and we, are, we have done the selection of the teams uh, for the instrument, for the, nom for, for the um, nominal instruments. And what we are doing now is to do the, the system study uh, to make the boundary conditions for these instruments uh, much clearer. So what I mean by boundary condition for the instrument is like a resource, you know, like ma mass, power, and, and thermal condition, and, and the allocation of the spacecraft. That's, that's ongoing now. So uh, things will be clearer in the in next half a year or so. So here's the model payload. Uh, Which, mean, which is the, the list of instruments that meets all the science requirements we have uh, formulated. Uh, we of, of course, we have a sampler, um, which enables acquisition of more than 10 gram sample, forward samples from the surface. And then uh, we have a remote sensing, uh, remote sensing instrument, visible camera, near infrared, near infrared spectrometer, and gamma ray neutron spectrometer. That's really needed so that we can pick up the right uh, place to do the sampling. And we also have uh, in vitro observations to uh, enhance the science cases we have. So we, from these observations, we, we try to select the landing site and then, then do the sampling. Uh, 
So I, we, we really hope that this uh, suite, suites of instruments will tell us uh, the right, the right, and the best place to get the samples from. So so far, it's been about remote sensing and sampling. Uh, you do the remote sensing and select the landing site and do the sampling. But how about surface experiment? As I said before, um, for this mission, we we will try to stay on the surface for at least one one or two hours. So that why don't we think about performing some surface experiment? And indeed, that was the recommendation we received from our international review committee, that was which was held in uh, November last year. Uh, landing experiment or package that enhances the science objectives um, was highly recommended. That's we do have a model for this. Um, th this um, this uh, figure shows the case for the Hayabusa 2 mission that's, that's really now uh, ongoing. When we get to the target asteroid Ryugu, um, Hayabusa 2 will deploy a small lander by the name Mascot, which is provided by CNES and DRL. And then uh, this will be, this will enhance the science of the case of, in the case of Hayabusa 2. Then what kind of science should we think about? Well, you know, what are the directions um, that, should be, uh, that should be boosted by a lander in the case of MMX? And we should, uh, and as I said before, it's from the JAXA perspective, this is a sample return mission. So that lander, this landing experiment or landing package should, should enhance the value of the sample return mission. It cannot be just you know, it cannot be just free floating from the, the, the principle of this mission. So then, given that boundary condition, what should be the science case for the, for the landing experiment or, or landing package? Um, so now, now, when it comes to landing package, um, his, I'm, I'm coming back to the sampling operation now. And the spacecraft, for the case of MMX mission, the spacecraft will land on MMS, uh, land on, on Phobos to pursue sophisticated landing operation. So um, it will stay on the surface for a while. And so the idea is, is that as a, as a surface, surface experiment, uh, you might want to think about uh, operating something like LIBS instrument, which will give you a detailed uh, composition of the, of the spot in the close proximity of the landing site. And you may also want to think about um, gently deploying a surface package and not, not dropping a surface package from, from higher altitude, but really gently, gently deploying a surface package after you land on the surface. So those are the two issues that, that comes into play, um, especially when you, when you, if you think about the mission scenario of MMX. And we did have a European workshop in, in Berlin uh, to, to uh, discuss about this issue. And uh, two major conclusions from the, from the workshop is that as a surface package, one can think about two directions. And the first one is to have a, have a mobile uh, element, mobile surface package for cosmochemistry uh, science. So this really goes into the, this deals with the heterogeneity of, of, of the, the surface composition of Phobos. So it's, so the, the, the main spacecraft will get the detailed information of the, of the composition of the landing site, but maybe a surface package that with a, with a mobile capability may, may be able to get detailed information from multiple sites on the, on the surface of Phobos. That's the, the idea behind, the, behind this first recommendation. And the second idea that was kind of agreed in the workshop is to have a long-lived lander for um, aiming at geophysics, um, trying, to, trying to understand the inner uh, structure of an asteroid that has been, uh, has been there for a long time. And maybe having a long-lived lander uh, to do the measurement of vibration and, 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 and maybe a seismic measurement, that may enable us to understand the inner structure of Phobos. So that was the second recommendation coming from the workshop. So these two ideas are going into uh, different directions. They may need different um, design for the surface package, but um, we'll see if, if, one of, if any of them will be realized in the future or not. That's, that's still an open issue. And another discussion we had uh, is that um, 
maybe having something as simple as a detachable small cameras to be dropped drop to uh, attractive spots that are too risky for the main spacecraft to, to, uh, to access. That was another, another idea coming, um, coming in as a, as a landing, uh, as a landing um, package. Because, you know, like some, somewhere like in the, in the middle of the Stickney crater, that's really attractive. You wish you can access with your main spacecraft, but I don't think that's going to happen. Then why don't we drop a small camera into that spot so that we can make a close-up observations? That was another idea that's kind of um, floating in the in the community. And this landing uh, experiment part is yet to be decided. So and this is my last uh, view graph. So what is our MMX mission? Uh, it's a mission to return 10 gram uh, sample from Phobos in order to look through the moon into the formation of the solar system. And I didn't, I didn't touch too much on this, but multiple international, international collaborations via various paths are under construction, and uh, it's making it a nice first dedicated step to Phobos and Deimos, very likely to be followed by many missions. And for JAXA, it is a step of return to Mars exploration. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Questions? So uh, just wanted to ask about the, the depth of the, the core uh, sample. You said 10 centimeters. Mm -hmm. is, your, is your idea that um, you will have the stratigraphy maintained throughout? Is it, is it going to be, in other words, the sample uh, 10 grams throughout the entire core and 10 centimeters depth, or are you just sampling from a depth of 10 centimeters? Just to be clear. Yes, uh, we, we thought first. Um, Scientists wanted to make it as a science requirement to keep the stratigraphy, but then engineering thinking thought thinks makes it not possible to make it as a requirement. But on the other hand, we think we can uh, distinguish the real surf samples from the real surface and others um, by analyzing the sample. So we don't keep it. We don't keep the stratigraphy, but when you have the samples at, at hand and if you if you analyze it, I think you can tell the difference between the real surface samples and, and then the others. That's a strategy we have, yes. Maybe I missed it, but um, do you have to worry about anchoring to the surface at all? Uh, they talked this morning that you don't have to be going very fast to match the escape velocity. So is that a worry for your mission? Uh, so when we do the like, like, like operational robotic sum, do we have to uh, counter the action so that we don't? With a bump on the surface or something. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, so Rosetta bounced off the surface. Mm -hmm. Do you have to worry mm -hmm. about anything mm -hmm. like that? Yes, that's that's under uh, that's under consideration. Um, there are some rough ideas like um, like or thrusting, you know, into the, the the opposite direction or something. So that's 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 the part of the consider engineering consideration. Yes, we ha we may have to worry about it. Yeah, that's going to be my short answer. Um, yeah, it's a very impressive mission, um, uh, and, but I just want um, to uh, comment on uh, the, some of the uh, simulations that we're currently doing at NASA Goddard, trying to simulate the prebiotic atmosphere of, the, of Mars that basically uh, lost uh, tens of kilograms per second of atmosphere, and, uh, and Phobos is the, the, the collector of those uh, prebiotic molecules. So the uh, one important goal, I think, of this mission can be uh, a basically uh, verification of the nitrogen reach if the uh, the atmosphere of, uh, both was nitrogen rich and if um, hydrogen cyanide one of the pre important prebiotic molecules um, uh, was present uh, in the uh, atmosphere of early mars mm -hmm. so so i did touch on the debris from the surface but you're saying that atmospheric component could have been implanted in the surface in, of in, in, yes that's right okay that, thank you yeah. So um, <clears throat> Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 both use uh, little packages, the Minerva packages, that help with targeting. Do, do you plan to have a similar approach where you would also deploy things onto the surface regardless of, of it being a package? Yes, it's really under, under consideration. Um, how do I say? Um, Oh, but budget is limited. That's that's the first thing. Um, the budget is limited. Okay. Budget. Budget is the budget will determine the who will do what. So um, 
Well, that's like, uh, like the lambda, we wish we could provide the lambda by ourselves, but it's it's unlikely that when it comes mm -hmm. to a lambda that which is the size of like mascot, you know, ten kilogram small lambda, I don't think we can afford it. So we really wish that Europeans will join their forces and make it happen. Did but when it comes to smaller ones like Minerva, um, maybe that that is possible. And that's one of the the the, the small detachable camera is belongs to that category of the instrument. So it's small one, I don't know, small reconnaissance-like yeah. instrument, uh, yes. And because you just mentioned that you're looking to the Europeans to provide possibly the, the landed package, are, mm -hmm. are you, are you uh, is there a commitment to that or? No, no not really. It, it's really, as I said, for us, this is a sample return mission and we, we don't think we can spare too much resources to, uh, to something that's not, that's not the main, main, you know, main part of the mission. So we cannot really tell how much resources will be available for, available for, for the lander. But Europeans are so interested that they kind of voluntarily uh, approached us and say, is there a chance for them to think about it? So that's where we are. Not, no, there's no real commitment. It's more or less a voluntary process. And we, we haven't really promised how much resources will be available for the lander, but Based on that, you know, gentleman's agreement, both sides are making making an effort. So, are you open to other volunteers approaching you? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. But it's it's that that basis, you know. No, nothing really, you know, nothing can be promised at this stage. Okay, I have a more technical questions. It concerns the uh, quasi-orbit phase of the mission before landing, and what will be the altitude of this orbit with respect to? Yes, the that's really a good question because. Um, yeah, something like you know, neutron gamma ray spectrum, whether they really they perform much better if, if the altitude is much lower. So 20 kilometers is like ball, like a, you know, like a nominal altitude we have in our mind. That it can we can adjust. Uh, so the ballpark number is 20 20 kilometers. That's the the standard altitude we have in our mind now. Um. As we discussed this morning, and I'm sure we'll discuss over the next day or so, um, there's a lot of diversity across Phobos, and there's a lot of processes that mix the character of the regolith. So that is good in many senses, in that any sample you obtain will obtain components of many different parts that uh, go into the creation of the regolith of uh, Phobos. Um, so, so given that concept, which was probably discussed during the Berlin meeting, um, will you have enough um, time in the remote sensing so that you can characterize both the site uh, of sampling as well as the diversity across Phobos so that when you have the samples, you can pick apart the various elements that you have in the Yes, uh, for the remote sensing part, yes, we can characterize the surface because if you if you look at the mission calendar, um, after getting into the orbit around Phobos, you have one year before you think about before you do the landing. Uh, because after one, if you really think about the mission scenario, after one year, there's Mars and Earth will come together, will, will come closer to each other, where you have the better better communication. And we will do the complicated things like landing when we have a better communication, of course. So we wait for one year to, we have one year to characterize the whole surface. So characterizing part, yes. Um, but do, do, can, will we do sampling for more than one point? That's a tough decision to make because, you know, you land once and then you get full samples. How, how dare you try another one? Or maybe you should, we don't know. Yeah, yeah true, yeah. And um, of course, scientists think has have seen the heterogeneity on the surface already, and they really ask for more than two site, two two samplings. But in mission, in, in project management, you know, you never know. I don't think you, you, I can tell now. I, I cannot force the project manager to do more than one sampling at this stage. Any other questions? I've got a really quick one. I might have missed it, but. What, what are you thinking about the time frame? Uh, yeah, I think we can make an uh, official announcement in August, in, you know, within the month. Uh, right now, things are really evolving. But during this summer, I think we can, we can, we can make the official announcement about the launch year.
for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's thank our speaker again.